Welcome to Electron Online, and here's our second example of how to graph a hyperbola and also how to find the center, the vertices, and the foci. Now, here we have an added difficulty in that the coefficients in front of the x squared term and the y squared term are not equal to each other. Now, it turns out in order to make this work out, the numbers are pretty carefully chosen so that it's kind of easy to take it in this form and change it to the general form. And the general form, of course, would look something like this. It would be like x minus h quantity squared divided by a squared minus y minus k quantity squared divided by b squared is equal to 1. So what we're trying to do is make this look like that. And the coefficients here are pretty carefully chosen so that it's fairly easy to do that. If it's not done carefully, it would be a very difficult problem. But nevertheless, it's still quite challenging. How do we make something like this look like that. And then how do we find the vertices, the foci, and the center? Well, this is how we do that. We want to use what we call the completion of the square method, which means we want to get the 41 over to the other side, and then we want to bring the x terms together and the y terms together, and then somehow come up with a perfect square. So that's how we do that. So 9x squared plus 54x, like this, and leave some space, and then we have minus 4y squared, plus 8y, and I'll leave some space, and that equals minus 41 when we bring the 41 across. So first what we want to do is we want to have a 1x square instead of a 9x square. So we're going to factor out a 9. So when we do that, we get 9 times x squared plus, well, 9 times 6 would be 54, so that would be 6x, like this, and we're trying to find out what that is equal to. And here we're going to factor out a minus 4, so minus 4 times y squared minus 2y, and leave some space for the third term, and that's minus 41. Okay, now we can go ahead and complete the squares. So the way we do that is we take half this coefficient, square it, and add it here. So that becomes 9 times x squared plus 6x. Half of 6 is 3 squared, we get plus 9. But since it's multiplied by this 9, we actually added an 81 on the left side, so we should add an 81 on the right side. So this becomes minus 41 plus 81. Okay, here we do the same thing. So we have minus 4 times y squared minus 2y. So we take half this coefficient, which is a minus 1, square it, we get a plus 1, add it here, and so we have to compensate for it over here. But notice, this is multiplied times a minus 4, so in essence, we subtract a 4 from the left side, which means we have to subtract a 4 from the right side. Okay, now we have this written as perfect square, so we can write this as the square of a binomial. So we have 9 times x plus 3 quantity squared minus 4 times y minus 1 quantity squared is equal to, and here we have minus 4, 1, that's plus, uh, that's plus 40, minus 4, that's 36. And we're almost there. Remember, we need to make it look like that, so we have to get rid of these coefficients, which means if we divide both sides by 36, we can do that. So we divide this by 36, we divide this by 36, and we divide this by 36. Then we get 9 divided by 36, which is 4 in the denominator. So that means that this can be written as x plus 3 quantity squared divided by 2 squared minus y minus 1 quantity squared divided by 9, which is 3 squared. I'll just write it in this form. 3 squared, which is equal to 1. And now you can see that we have that exact form. What is the center in this case? Well, the center is equal to hk. h would be negative 3, and k would be a 1. So now we can go ahead and start graphing this hyperbola. So let's draw the xy axis. So there's my x axis, there's my y axis, and the center can be found at minus 3 and 1. So 1, 2, 3, and 1. So this point right there is the point negative 3 and 1, which is the center of the hyperbola. Since the x term is first, that's a positive term, and the y term is second, the negative term, we can then see that the hyperbola is going to up, open up like this, which means that the transverse axis is going to be horizontal. So now we want to find the vertices. The vertices can be found by adding an a and subtracting an a from the x-coordinate of the center. So the vertices can be found as follows. The vertices is going to be equal to h minus a, k, and h 
plus a k. All right? So h, what did we find? h, h is equal to negative 3. So it would be negative 3 minus a, and a is going to be 2. So that would be minus 2, and k, of course, is still 1. And the other one would be h, which is negative 3, uh, negative 3, plus a, that would be plus 2 and 1. All right, simplifying that, so this would be equal to minus 5 and 1, and minus 1 and 1. So those are the two coordinates of the two vertices. So they'll be on the horizontal axis, so that would be minus 4, minus 5, so over here, that would be minus 5 and 1, and on the other side, it would be right here, that would be minus 1 and 1. So the two vertices right there. Now we need a box. So we start at the center, and we're going to go up B and minus B from the center. B is 3, right? So look, that's B, that's 3 squared, or B squared. So we go up 3 and down 3 from the center. So 1, 2, 3, so that would be this point right there. And 1, 2, 3, that would be this point right there. So those are the two points in the vertical direction, which now allow us to draw the box, like so. And now we can go ahead and draw the asymptotes through the corners, through the center, like this, and through the corners and through the center, like that. We know the hyperbola will be drawn this way. These are the two vertices, which means it's going to look like this, and like this on the right side, and like this, and like this on the left side. Okay, so we found the center, we found the vertices, now the foci. Well, the foci can be found by saying that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Now, a squared is right here, that would be 4, and b squared is right here, which is 9, that means c squared is equal to 13, or c is equal to the square root of 13. So that means that the foci can be found right here, so we take the center and we add square root of 13, on the x-coordinate, and we subtract square root of 13 from the x-coordinate. So that means that the foci can be found, it's going to be h minus c and k, and h plus c and k. So exact same way that we found the vertices, so this would be equal to minus 3 minus the square root of 13 and 1, and minus 3 plus the square root of 13 and 1. Now uh, see, the square root of 13 is somewhere between 3 and 4, about 3 and a half or so, right? So that means, let me use it, do it in red, where's my red pen right here? So that's plus 3, so that would be a focus would be about here, and another focus would be somewhere around there. And so we could say that this would be the minus 3 plus square root of 13 and 1, and on the other side it would be minus 3 minus the square root of 13 and 1. And that's how we find the foci of the hyperbola.